Tony Broom Ministries welcomes you to the Zoom Broom Room. Here is another presentation from a Zoom meeting, a song entitled, We'll Be Glad We Live for Jesus, and then the message entitled, The Law of Death and Life. God, everything's going to be all right. I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. We'll be glad that we live for Jesus. We'll be glad that we trusted in Him. I know we're already glad, but on that day, we'll definitely be glad that we live for the Lord. The doctor enters the room and he says, I got good news and bad news. Which one do you want to know first? We say, well, give me the bad news in case it's really bad, and then it'll even out. I'll cushion it with the good news. So we ask for the bad first, hoping to cushion it with the good news in the end. And that's why we're saying for our subject this time, the law of death and life. Instead of saying the law of life and death, we're saying the law of death and life. We say the law of death first, presenting death first and then life. In Romans chapter 8 verses 1 through 4, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. Condemnation is a word I was thinking about when praying and studying over this message. Condemnation has to do with guilt, has to do with shame, has to do with dread. You dread it when you're in condemnation. You dread it when you are facing anger and wrath, or your disappointment. All this condemnation. There's so much condemnation. You turn on the TV and one is condemning another and digging up dirt on another and trying to find fault with somebody else. But the Scripture tells us that there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. If you are in Christ Jesus, that means all kind of terminology. You're saved, you're born again, you know the Lord, you are a Christian. All these things you can put to it, but the thing is, you know the Lord. 
you're a part of the family of God, you're in the family of God. When you live for Jesus, you got something to be glad about, and you are not condemned. No matter what you've done in your past, no matter what's going on around you, no matter how bad things seem in the world around us seems to be falling apart. But the scripture here tells us there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. The reason that some people are condemned is because they're walking in the flesh. Now all of us are living in the flesh, but we're not walking after the flesh. So many people are walking after the flesh and they're living after the flesh and they wonder why they have no victory. They're surrounded with fear and defeat and everything is going wrong. It's because they're walking in the flesh and not in the spirit. If you walk in the spirit, the spirit is controlling your life. You're not perfect. You haven't reached that place that you don't ever do a wrong thing or think a wrong thought or say a wrong word. But you're led by the spirit. You're led by the spirit. You're walking in the spirit. You have no condemnation. And it's a wonderful life to live, a wonderful way to feel, to know that you're not condemned. John chapter 3 talks about being condemned. It says, if we believe we're not condemned if we don't believe we're condemned already because we have not believed in the name of the only begotten son of god so to condemn someone or be under condemnation that condemnation says that you are not believing but if you believe you're not under condemnation it doesn't matter somebody can beat you with a horse whip and it doesn't put you under condemnation it might make you hurt but it doesn't condemn you. No one can condemn us because we belong to the Lord. And here is our text verse, verse 2, Romans 8. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. We're talking about the law of death and life. The law of the Spirit of life has made me free from the law of sin and death. We do not have to go through life being in bondage, being in fear, and we've seen so much fear in this time that we're going through with the coronavirus situation. I've never seen a world and even a church, countries and nations of the world, I've never seen people gripped in fear like they are now. Fear has gripped our government. Fear has gripped our cities, our communities, our states, our countries, and our world in large degree has been gripped and is living in and under fear and the scripture tells us that perfect love casts out fear we don't have to go around in fear we should do what we need to do when we need to do it we should protect ourselves we should be the best citizens that we can be but god does not want us to live in fear god does not want us to be bound with fear the law of the spirit of life has made me free and this law and the Spirit is in Christ Jesus, has made us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh. The law, there's nothing wrong with God's law, but the problem, the fault, the shortcoming of the law was that it was weak because of us, not because of God. It was weak through the flesh. The law, what it could not do because it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. What the law could not do, Jesus came along and did it. Because the law said, thou shalt not steal. Uh-oh, I've stolen. I've stolen crackers. I've stolen those large fudge brownie bars out of the state school machines at night after taps and everybody goes to bed. I went in there and I put my hands up in that thing and I pushed them up. Brother Ken, don't tell me you know how to do this. I pushed those things up. You got the candy bars stacked on top of each other. And I took my hands and I pushed them bad boys up and I got me the one out of the bottom of them. Woo! Got me a fudge brownie. Eat that bad boy in the bed. But see, what got some of us caught was some of those guys had cracker crumbs in the bed and when they started to make the bunk up the next morning they had cracker crumbs all over the floor and here comes the caretakers house people and say what in the world are you boys doing i know what you're doing you've been in the machine at night 
sin doesn't caught up with you. Be sure your sin will find you out. So whether it's stealing or whether it's killing or whether it's disobeying your parents, going against God, we've all come short in sin and come short of the glory of God. What the law could not do because of all that sin and weakness. God sent his son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Now Jesus did not have sinful flesh, but he came like one of us. He came in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. He came and said, this is how you're supposed to live. And he showed us how we're supposed to live. And he condemned sin in the flesh. How did he do that? By taking our sin upon himself. By becoming our sin sacrifice, Jesus Christ suffered in our stead. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Jesus did something else. When he died on the cross and gave himself a sacrifice for our sins, do you know what he did? He fulfilled the law of God. He said, Do not think that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. I came not to destroy, but to fulfill. Jesus fulfilled the law perfectly. He satisfied the righteousness and wrath of God, the holiness of God. He fulfilled the law perfectly. And now we who are righteous, we who belong to him, we walk not in the flesh, but in the spirit, and the law is fulfilled in us. Not only did Jesus fulfill the law, but we, little Christs, little Christians, we go about fulfilling the law every day. We don't have to have a police force to tell us to do right. We don't have to have a deputy to make us do right. We don't have to have someone to come along and have a gun over our head to make us do right. It's in our heart. It's in our nature to do right because we belong to Jesus now. John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. This law of life is a law of the spirit. It has to do with life, which is the opposite of death. The words that I speak unto you, Jesus said, they are spirit and they are life. In the first part of that verse, we can certainly, definitely agree with the first part of that verse it says the spirit it's the spirit who quickens and gives life the spirit is the one who gives life the flesh profits nothing and we can say amen to that the flesh in itself is no profit there's no profit in living in the flesh what a man sows he'll reap if you sow to your flesh corruption you will of the flesh reap corruption if you sow to the spirit you will of the spirit reap life everlasting all of us have sown to our flesh and we've reaped corruption but now we're sowing to the spirit and we're reaping life everlasting we have eternal life the spirit quickens the flesh does not profit the words that i speak unto you they are spirit and they are life the law of death says everyone or everything which is living sooner or later will die now that's real comforting isn't it you're going to die sooner or later. Heart attack, blood pressure, diabetes, coronavirus, influenza, pneumonia. One thing will get you, the other one will. Like Tennessee Ernie said, if the left one won't get you, then the right one will. Sooner or later, everything that's living, sooner or later will die. That's the law of death. The law of death says because you've sinned against God, there is no way that you can get out of it. Sooner or later you're going to die. Because one man, sin entered into the world and death by sin, and so death has passed upon all men, for all have sinned. Now there are exceptions to this death thing. It's like Enoch in the Old Testament and the rapture saints in the New Testament. There are exceptions to those. Those who will be alive and remain, when Jesus comes, they'll be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. For there are those who won't die, but generally speaking, everything living, sooner or later, will die. The law of death is governed by sin. It's because of sin. Why do people have to die? Why do poor little kids, innocent children, have to die? It's because of sin. We ate of the tree. God told us not to do it, but we did it anyway. Your mama told you not to do certain things, and you did it anyway. That's our nature in a sinful nature when we are in sin. 
And that's what the law of death is governed by sin. Yet Christ has made us free from the law of sin and death. Praise God, we don't have to live under that condemnation anymore. Christ has made us free from the law of sin and death. The law of life has to do with the spirit. It's like the law of death has to do with the flesh and sin. The law of life has to do with the spirit. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. We're not governed by that law anymore. Now we still live in a world. We're still surrounded by disease and by sickness. We're still surrounded by people who lose their loved ones, and many times we lose our loved ones, as we say it like that, to death. We're not exempt from physical death in this life. We are surrounded by things that are heartbreaking and heart aching. We're not exempt from those things, but we're not governed by that old law anymore. We're not governed by the law of death. There is a law of death. It's a law that says sooner or later, no matter how pretty you are, skipping about, and beautiful, attractive, sooner or later, you're going to die. That's the law of death. But the law of the Spirit is the law of life. And we're not living by the law of death anymore. We're living by the law of the Spirit. The law of life is both constructive and destructive. You notice that the law of life is both constructive and destructive. It's destructive because it destroys bad things like the works of the devil, such as sin and sickness. The law of life. You say, well, that's life. Life does good. Yes, it does good to those who are good. It does good to people and to animals and to birds and to God's creation. But the law of life is also destructive. It destroys sin. It destroys sickness. When Jesus came into the presence of one who was sick, one who was dying or even already dead, one who was blind, one who was lame, deaf or mute, couldn't hear or talk, when he came into their presence, what did he do? His spirit of life destroyed. It didn't destroy them, but it destroyed the disease that was in them and he said, rise and be healed, and they were healed. It's because of the spirit, the law of the spirit of life. The law of the spirit of life is destructive. It destroys sin and sickness and bad things. It also is constructive. It brings about or creates good things like blessing, freedom, healing, and restoration. So the spirit, the law of the spirit of life, it creates, it heals, it does good, it blesses, it helps people. It is most surely an humbling and noble thing to have the law of righteousness and life fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. We have the law of life living in us, the spirit of the living God. He lives, he abides in us, and it's because of this law of life. It's because of the law of the spirit of God who lives and abides in us. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. We're not governed by that old law of death and evil anymore. We're governed by life and peace and goodness. And we do not have to live in fear because that perfect love of God casts out fear and it does away with that old deadness, that old law of condemnation. We can live in life. We can live in peace. We can live in joy because God has a better life for us. God wants good things for you. And God has already given you eternal life. If you have eternal life, everything else is a piece of cake because God has already blessed you. He's freed you from the law of sin and death. He's given you life and life more abundantly in His Son, Jesus Christ. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to do well and do good where you can be a blessing and do good to other people. We cannot help other people when we're so down and we're so depressed and we're so worried. We're so fretted and we're so bound by the law of corruption and death. We cannot help anybody like that. But when we're set free by the grace of God and we live not under condemnation, but we live in the spirit of God, we can bless others. We can be a blessing to others. And the law, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus 
makes us free from the law of sin and death. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to be in this Zoom room with these people tonight. And I pray, Lord, that you'd bless us as we rejoice in our salvation and the fact that Jesus Christ has made us free from the law of sin and death. We're not bound by sin anymore. and We're not worried about death. Death for the child of God is just a passage into life. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. Help us to rejoice in our salvation and to make sure others hear the good news of Jesus too. In Jesus' name, amen. You have been part of a Zoom Broom Room meeting. Thanks for joining us. The subject has been the law of death and life. Make sure that you know Jesus Christ is your Savior and Lord. This has been a production of Tony Broom Ministries.